Hello, my name is Yuan Cui, and I also go by Charles. I'm a computer science PhD student at Northwestern University, and I'm here to present our paper, Adaptive Assessment of Visualization Literacy. This is joint work with my wonderful collaborators, Lili Guo, Fu Mengyang, and Matthew K at Northwestern, as well as Yi Jinding and Lane Harrison from WPI. Let's begin with the title of our paper. Visualization literacy is the ability to interpret data visualizations. This is an important ability because data visualizations convey important messages across different domains, and people make consequential decisions based on visualizations. An assessment is a test that measures some ability, and an adaptive assessment is a test that picks the next question based on how someone answered the previous questions. For example, many popular standardized tests are adaptive, such as the GRE, uh, and the SAT, the college admissions test in the US, is also in the process of becoming adaptive. Adaptive assessment has many advantages over conventional static assessments. Uh, to list a few, they're shorter and similarly precise, they allow for frequent retesting, and they create positive examining experience. In this project, we developed two adaptive assessments, AV Lab and AQLV, for two aspects of visualization literacy. Our adaptive assessments are based on existing static assessments, VLAT and CALVI, and the length of our adaptive assessments are half of their original counterparts. What motivated this paper is the following questions. How can researchers and educators assess people's visualization literacy efficiently? How can they study the development and evolution of people's such ability? And how can they evaluate the effectiveness of their interventions in teaching visualization literacy? The answer to these questions is to have concise and repeatable assessment of visualization literacy. In the remainder of the talk, I will first introduce the background, talk about how we constructed and evaluated our adaptive tests, and end with a brief discussion. For more technical details, please read our full paper. Chapter 1, Background. Let's begin with VLAT. Lee et al. developed VLAT in 2017 in order to measure the ability to interpret and extract information from data visualizations. They created a bank of 53 multiple choice items that cover 12 chart types and 8 tasks. On the actual test of VLAT, all 53 items are used. Here's an example of a VLAT question of a line chart that asks the test taker to retrieve value. Next up, Goe et al. developed Calvi in 2023 in order to measure the critical thinking ability of detecting visualization misinformation. The authors of Calvi developed a bank of 45 trick items and 15 normal items. The trick items cover nine chart types and 11 misleaders, and the actual test of Calvi contains 15 selected trick items and 15 normal items. You're probably wondering what these words mean, and let's begin with misleader. Misleaders are ways a chart can lead to conclusions not supported by the data. And the trick item is an item whose visualization contains a misleader. Here's an example of a trick item that has an unconventional scale direction for the x-axis that may mislead the viewer to incorrectly infer the trend of this bar chart. On the other hand, normal items are just items based on a well-formed visualization. The argument for having normal items in Kelby is that people encounter both misleading and well-formed visualizations in their daily lives, thus making distinguishing them harder. The drawbacks of VLAN and Calvi are that they're long and static. And the solution to solve this challenge is to leverage adaptive testing, whose core idea is to adaptively select items best suited to a test taker's ability. In the next chapter, I will talk about how we constructed the adaptive tests. Our adaptive tests has four steps. The first one is initialization where we set an initial estimate of the test taker's ability. The second step is item selection, 
where the best suited item for a particular test taker is selected. The test taker then answers the item, and we score the test taker by updating the estimate of their ability. If certain termination criteria are met, the test terminates. Otherwise, we select another item and the process continues. The mathematical model that formalizes adaptive testing is called item response theory. It describes the relationship between a test taker's ability, item parameters, and the probability of test taker with ability theta answering an item correctly. For more technical details, please read our full paper. I want to spend a bit more time talking about step four, termination. We decided that we want our adaptive tests to have a fixed length format, meaning that they will terminate after a threshold number of items are answered. The question then becomes, how many items should ABLAT and ACALV have? We answered this question by comparing the measurement precision of adaptive tests of different length with the original versions using simulation. After analyzing the results and considering the trade-off between test length and measurement precision, we chose 27 as the length of AVLAT and 11 as the number of trick items for ACALV. In the end, we halved VLAT and CALV using adaptive testing. AVLAT has 27 items and ACALV has 15. It's worth mentioning that we also run a qualitative study that reduced the number of normal items in ACALV to just four. Please read our paper for more detail. Now, let's talk about how we evaluated our adaptive assessments. We evaluated them on two dimensions reliability and validity. For reliability, we want to answer the question, does the test provide consistent and stable measurement? We use the notion of test-retest reliability. To measure this, we recruited participants to take our adaptive assessments twice with a week in between. We then computed the reliability coefficient ICC between their performance on their first attempt and their second attempt. We found that AVLAT has excellent reliability, and so does ACALV. For validity, we want to answer the question, does the test measure what it is designed to measure? And to test the validity of our adaptive assessments, we recruited participants to take both the adaptive and original versions of the assessments with a week in between. We separated participants into two groups in order to counter the ordering effect. We then computed the correlation coefficient between their performances on both versions. Our results show that AVLAT has high validity and ACALV has acceptable validity. In conclusion, both AVLAT and ACALV are reliable and valid. Moving to the last chapter, I like to briefly discuss some interesting findings. The topic is correlations within chart types, tasks, and misleaders. Through our, our studies and past studies, many participants were asked to answer these visualization literacy questions. We use these data to investigate the correlations of performance within different chart types, tasks, and misleaders. For example, in v VLAT items, the task retrieve value and find extremum have high correlation. And we also found high correlations among many such pairs. This kind of high correlation has many implications. First, this is an opportunity to further improve adaptive testing. And second, we can also use them to rethink taxonomy in visualization literacy tasks. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We welcome you to read our full paper and to reach out to us via email.